Hi. So before we get stuck in, let me tell you a story. Get comfortable. So it's a story that you might be familiar with. Um, I certainly am. Um, I can't count the number of times I've heard it when I've chatted with other product managers. Um, I want to introduce you to Jane. Uh, so she works for uh, a software company as a product manager. She hasn't been there for very long. And um, when she took the job, she was so excited about the impact that she was going to have there. And um, there's no shortage of work. Um, lots of feature requests from customers, from the sales team, uh, from the leadership team, from her own team. And um, the team is busy, so busy. Um, and the things that they're working on seem valuable. Lots of people in the company asking for them. But Jane finds herself asking, are they definitely valuable? Am I really sure? And the truth is they don't really know. The, the feedback is good, but they don't know if it's really moving the company forward. And this little niggle sits in the back of Jane's mind. And she's so busy that there's no way to find ways to reduce that uncertainty. And um, Jane is a time poor PM and she's got a problem. Um, if that story sounds familiar to you, maybe some of it rings true for you right now even, then hopefully this talk is for you. But let me take a second to introduce myself and tell you why you should care about what I think about product strategy. Um, I'm Matt, um, I'm based in Dublin in Ireland where I've been for the last four years or so. Um, this photo was taken pre-lockdown. As you can see, I'm now sporting a dashing lockdown haircut. And I'm a senior product manager at Intercom and I've been building successful products and services in various guises for the last 13 years or so. So I'll tell you a little bit about what I do at the moment and then we'll get straight into the meat of the talk. So in case you haven't heard of Intercom before, our mission is to make internet business personal. Um, we believe in the power of close relationships. Um, the Intercom platform and the messenger are there to make it easy for businesses to connect with their customers. So websites, web apps, mobile apps, email. Um, I joined Intercom just over a year ago uh, to look after the mobile part of that. And one of the very first things I did uh, was think about our strategy. And that strategy has been the foundation of everything we've done since on the mobile team. Um, we're doubling the size of our team. We made it, you know, we made a bunch of difficult choices around what to prioritize or not prioritize. And we made a lot of product improvements. And most recently we launched mobile carousels, which are a, a new way of thinking about onboarding and messaging customers in your mobile apps. So, you know, over the years, I've kind of had a lot of experience being in Jane's shoes. Um, I've made a bunch of mistakes and I've learned over the years that there are some things that do just work. So let's talk about Jane's problem for a moment. She's actually got four of them. So first up, Things seem valuable, but the team doesn't know for sure. Um, there's a lack of understanding about what makes an opportunity really valuable. And then closely linked with that, Jane isn't sure about how to prioritize the many, many opportunities that she has on her plate coming from all kinds of directions. And the knock-on effect is that she can't really look to the future with any confidence. Um, there's no needle that her work is moving. And then the icing on the, t on the cake is that because she's so busy with her day-to-day -day job as a product manager, she can't find the time to take a step back and do something about all of that. There's just too much going on. Now, the first three problems here are all strategy problems. And a, a strategy is there to help ground us. It tells us confidently what's important. It tells us what is valuable to us and our customers and why. Um, it tells us what outcomes we're trying to drive. Um, it helps us make better decisions because it's the measuring stick that we use for all of the opportunities in front of us. And you know, a strategy is consistency. And controversially, I'm going to say that the fourth problem, um, you know, uh, not having time to deal with these things, is a combination of a perception problem and a planning problem. And I'm going to talk about that in a, in a, in a little while. Um, but basically, you need a strategy to fix the first three problems, but you can't because of the fourth problem. So to get from where Jane is now to a better place, there are four high level steps that we as product people can take. Um, there's no getting away from it. You have to make time. That's number one. Um, number two, we need to adopt a continuous discovery mindset. 
Three, we need to build and adopt the strategy based on the things that you learn. Um, and then four, we need to do it over and over again, adapting as you learn more. So in this talk, I'm really focusing on the first two. Um, I'll touch on all of them, but the goal of this talk is to help you get from nothing to being as well informed as you can be to start tackling the strategy part. So this isn't a guide on how to do strategy, it's a, how, a guide on how to get from nothing to something. So some of what I'm gonna say is gonna sound kind of obvious. So you know, why am I saying it? Um, I've probably had over the years, a couple of hundred conversations about this and I could count on one hand the number of times people have been you know, using the approach that I'm gonna share. Um, it's one of those things that sounds obvious when you hear it, but people seldom manage to get their head above water for long enough to reframe their perspective and realize that this is possible. So first things first, we have to make time. Um, earlier on, I said that this was a perception and a planning problem, and I bet a lot of you heard that and didn't really have a positive reaction to it. You know, what if I make time for this? Everything else will suffer. Um, trust me, this is going to sound super simple when you hear it. So this is how folks often think about strategic thinking. Weeks long periods of focused effort. Um, and the problem with this is that taking that much time away from the day-to-day -day needs of the team and your role is often impossible. Um, there are all kinds of organizational problems that may make this impractical as well. You know, top-down thinking, uh, lack of buy-in for focusing on strategy in the first place, um, complacency, um, change aversion, you know, it's a long list of things. Um, and can you do it like this? Well, yeah, sure you can. And I've seen lots of companies and teams dedicate hefty, time-intensive efforts to strategy work like that. And it, you know, it, it works. Um, but in reality, for most of us, um, this isn't practical unless our role is 100% focused on strategy. The day-to-day -day reality of product work means that you can't drop everything to focus on building a strategy. Um, the idea that strategic research is a big bang, time-intensive task is actually damaging. It needs to die. Nine times out of 10, this one idea is a thing that stops product managers from being successful when they're in a similar situation to Jane. So what's the alternative? Um, there's no way around it. You do have to make time, um, but it doesn't have to be entire full weeks. Um, if you can find an hour a week, do it. If you can find more than that, do it. The goal here is to make progress, even if it's slow. Every increment you make will increase your understanding and help you make better decisions. So over time, those baby steps will come together to give you what you need to articulate a strategy. So for me, I have an hour a day, most days of the week. This is a screenshot of, of my calendar. Um, and the most challenging thing with this approach actually is the need for patience and persistence. Um, on the face of it, it doesn't seem like you could accomplish much in that kind of time, but I tell you that you definitely can. Um, for example, in terms of elapsed time, it took me about three months to develop Intercom strategy for mobile using this approach. Um, at the time, I was dedicating five hours a week to it. So like an afternoon um, spread out. And we went from no strategy at all to a detailed strategy with a few surprises in there to boot. Um, and then now I'm kind of continuing to do this. Um, I'm down to four hours a week. Uh, set, you know, time set aside for this. So it, it definitely can be done. So the key takeaway is this, which would you rather have? No time at all dedicated to improving your understanding of your product and your customers, or some, even if it's just a little. The benefits stack up over time. So you need to find that hour or more if you can and dedicate it to this task. Make that time something that you look forward to. So let's talk about continuous discovery. What does, what does that even mean? So the trick is to make the most of the time that you have, your one hour, your four hours, you know, whatever it is. And I'm reminded of that Rumsfeld quote, which I'm gonna to have to read because I always, I always make a mess of it. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. And that's to say, we know there are some things we don't know. Continuous discovery is about improving your understanding of your product's place in the world iteratively, over time, predictably. You need to start by exploring and consolidating what you know. 
So from there, you can start to ask questions. You can question things. Start digging into what you know to uncover new insights and new questions. And the key with both of those is to collaborate early on. So to do this well, you need some kind of structure. So I use a working document, which for me is just a Google Doc. There's some screenshots of, of, uh, of one of those here. And that doc is the home for all of my evolving thinking. Um, the working doc is where all of my messy thoughts and explorations live. So it will be full of dead ends. Um, it will be full of some things that seem obvious. And it's gonna be, I have a few things in there as well that are absolute diamonds. So let's take a look at what makes up a solid working document for, for this kind of work. So this is the foundation of a working doc. Um, these groups will highlight many of the more important features, um, more important areas of understanding that you'll need. And, and there are four key sections, um, but you should adapt this for your own circumstances. So my starting point is always this, customers, usage, the market, and then my own hypotheses and guesses. And the goal with all of these when you first start is to simply gather facts. You're discovering the value drivers or detractors for your customers and your business. And there's not really much room for opinion here. There are no, yeah, that seems right answers. Uh, you want to make sure that you have good qualitative and quantitative insights here to answer these questions. And you'll see from this list, you know, the starter questions are pretty broad, uh, you know, from the kinds of jobs your customers perform to how frequently they might churn. And all of these things together give you a rounded picture of what your customers are like. And if there are things here that you don't know, good. And that's exactly why we're doing this. Um, you're taking the first step towards um, a more sophisticated understanding of your customers and your product. So use your time to try and find out the answers to these questions. And do some research into you know, what makes for a good product strategy. Um, there's loads of you know, books, blog posts, talks, podcasts. There's loads of stuff on Product School as well. Um, they'll inspire you to ask the right questions. And the best questions for you might be a bit different to these. Um, but these aren't a bad place to start if you're unsure. For me, for example, the questions around segmentation of customers sounded like the most straightforward ones for me in the beginning when I started doing this. That was actually the exploration that delivered the most value for our mobile strategy at Intercom in the end. So going down that rabbit hole, we uncovered all kinds of customer behaviors that we didn't know existed before. And those discoveries ended up um, underpinning our strategy, which we're working from to, you know, today. Now, the, the, the main challenge folks often have here is the breadth of skills required to answer these questions. Uh, maybe you are an SQL whiz, or maybe you're not. Um, maybe you've got incredible interviewing skills, and maybe you don't. And to answer many of these questions, you're gonna be pushed outside of your comfort zone, or you're gonna need to collaborate. So, before you open your working doc to the world to collaborate with them, fill it with as much as you can to get started. The biggest piece of advice I can offer you here is to make sure that you manage expectations before you ask people to collaborate with you. Um, for people who are unaccustomed to this kind of thinking, a, a messy document with lots of unanswered questions isn't just daunting, it's kind of scary. Um, a document like this exposes blind spots. And people find that hard sometimes. The key is to make sure that the people you're working with understand the rules of the game we're playing here. So we're being honest with ourselves. That doc is a safe place to say that we don't know something. It's safe because the people working on it have agreed together that they're in pursuit of knowledge. So being open now and addressing those knowledge gaps will bring big rewards later on down the line. Now, once you have your foundations laid, your working doc is full of what you know to be true. We can have fun tearing it apart a little bit, which sounds counterintuitive. You wanna be asking questions. So why are these things true? Why do customers behave this way? Why do customers from some segments behave differently to others? Why do they do this job, but not this one? And it's like peeling an onion, I guess. Um, you're interrogating the information you've gathered 
um, and that's fun. And it will also open up new questions and expose new insights that you hadn't considered before. Now, there are lots of great tools out there for this kind of thing. Um, it doesn't just have to be a Google Doc with a load of bullet points in it. Um, I'm personally a huge fan of strategizers, business model and value proposition canvases. I'm also a big fan of Wardley maps. Um, if you haven't checked those out before, take some time today to go and have a look. Um, they are fantastic ways to visualize much of the knowledge you're gonna be collecting here. Um, and they'll help you to understand and absorb it by visualizing it in a different way. Now, continuous discovery is the hardest part. Why is that? So by articulating the gaps in your knowledge, you're gonna get a much better understanding of the size of the problem that you have. Um, it's very difficult to see written down a list of all the things I don't know. And then the second thing that makes it hard is that this takes time. If you're dedicating an hour, two hours a week to this, it will take time to achieve um, a real understanding of all of those things. Um, and so it takes patience and resolve. That said, every iteration you make, every hour you spend on this, whether that's one hour a week or 10, will make you a better product manager. Each small step improves your understanding and will help you make much more informed decisions. So this is Ratty. Ratty is another PM uh, at Intercom. Um, we had a chat recently about finding time for strategy and I shared some thoughts with her, um, the same ones that I did with you just now. Now, Ratty's an incredible PM. She's always up for giving something a go. Um, she's found an hour a day uh, to dedicate to this and she started building out her working doc. And one weekend she had this to say, I've made so much progress just this week. And that's my social proof that what I'm telling you really does work. Um, now, you could stop at number two and just use continuous discovery as a way to grow your understanding, get alignment in your team, make better product decisions. You will unlock extra superpowers when you document your learning. You make future focus statements and gain buy-in from the broader company. So I'm gonna quickly go through the steps three and four from this four kind of step process. Um, like I said, the goal of this talk is to help you get this far. And for many, if not most of us, that will take time. So I wanna make sure that I leave you with a small vision of what comes next, but the important stuff, if you're in a similar situation to Jane, is to start um, with the first two and, and, and be patient and get through the whole thing. So third part. So, you've done all this exploration. Um, you're now full of knowledge. And at that point, turning that into a strategy is really the next challenge. So you need to spot the important trends. Uh, you need to spot the opportunities that you've uncovered through all of that research. Um, and also you need to be honest about what are the weird exceptions that you discovered in there as well. And you need to start to figure out what the important parts are for your customers for your product, for your business? You know, should we focus on one outcome or is that too restrictive? Should we focus on more than that? Um, the strategy you create will be the framework for your decision-making. So asking yourself, does this new opportunity that's in front of me align with our strategy? Um, and helping you make that decision, yes or no, or do we do it, do we not do it? So in this step, you'll have formalized your understanding into measurable outcomes and future thinking principles. And because we're following this continuous discovery approach, the work doesn't stop. Once you're on this train, you don't get off. Um, you update your strategy with new data, new insights when the time feels right. So I give ours some love every six months or so, bringing in all of the learnings I've had up until that point, um, and also including measuring how well um, um, is the strategy working out? So to bring it together before um, we finish up, um, number one, you have to make time and any time is better than no time. Number two, adopt a continuous discovery approach using a working doc and be patient. Three, bring your learnings together and document them in a way that makes future decision making easy. And then four, keep doing it over and over. You'll get better each time you do it. 
And as I said at the start, the talk was to get you from no time for this to I'm getting value from continuous discovery. Um, I'll leave you with two quick recommendations for reading that cover the third step, building the actual strategy. Two really great books. So Good Strategy, Bad Strategy by uh, Richard Rummelt um, and The Invincible Company by the folks at Strategizer. Now, you'll be forgiven for thinking that I'm being paid a commission for recommending so much of their work. Unfortunately, I'm not. They're just very good recommend them wholeheartedly. So I hope you enjoyed that talk. I hope it was useful for you. On that note, I'm going to finish up here. Um, if you have questions, you can find me on Twitter. Um, I'm at MRT Cropper on Twitter. And thank you very much. <laughs>